can't tell, it's not telling me. That's annoying. Yeah, that's yeah. just the PowerPoint. You can't see yourself when you're doing it. No. Well, you can if you want to, but then you can't see the PowerPoint because the PowerPoint's too small. Oh, uh, okay. Yep, we're live. And the other thing is, of course, when it's like that, you can't see comments or no. um, who's watching or whatever. Oh, oh no, I have got one. Good morning everyone and welcome to St Mary's Thursday morning communion. Let's pray. Great and glorious God, we gather to worship you. We lift our eyes to you in reverent awe before your majesty. Generous and merciful God, we come to worship you. We lift our eyes to you, giving thanks for your compassion. Welcoming and empowering God, we worship you. We lift our eyes to you and we celebrate your faithfulness. Holy is the Lord our God and greatly to be praised. Amen. Come, all that are weary, all that are carrying burdens so heavy, Jesus, Jesus will, will give us rest. Come, take what Jesus has to offer, love, forgiveness and grace. Christ, Christ will give us peace. Come. Find rest and learn from Jesus, for our Saviour will give us rest in our souls. Come, let us worship our God. Let us follow our Saviour who leads us into life. Sorry, we are very distracted. St George's are having the grass cut at the moment and they're making one hell of a racket. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's quite distracting. <laughs> So let's attempt to quieten our hearts and minds for our confession. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you, as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive us. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. We run away from those who abuse you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, Christ have mercy. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, Christ have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's praise God for his mercy and grace. Glory, Glory to, to the creator who gives us life. Glory, Glory to Jesus whose love remakes us. Glory to the spirit companion on our journey. Glory be to God. Amen. And we affirm our faith in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hannah's going to bring us our reading from the Gospel of John. At the opening of John's Gospel, a series of people bear witness to who Jesus is. The author then confirms this witness by recording the actions of Jesus. These are signs of his nature and power. The first sign is given at the wedding of Cana, the next village to Nazareth. The transformation of ritual water into gospel wine reveals Jesus' glory and gives rise to belief in those with perception. John chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw out some and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine, as the guests had become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. That dog. <laughs> Caleb has been in and out that door all morning. He's driving us nuts. It's my job. <laughs> it must have been hard for Mary on the day of the family wedding at Cana. As a close member of the family, she would share its responsibilities for the entertainment of the guests. So feel for her as she watches the wine run dry. Feel Mary's mixture of pride and embarrassment at the number of guests who have answered the invitation and the shortage of wine as a result. The support of so many family and friends at a marriage is wonderful, but it causes problems. I can feel for Mary as the guests keep coming and she realises that that supply of wine is about to run out. But feel her hopes rise as Jesus and his new friends all arrive. Feel her pride at seeing her special firstborn being surrounded by such strong and support. Feel her confidence that with Jesus present, all will be well. He is a caring, loving person who seeks the happiness of all. Surely she can trust Jesus to transform this occasion. But feel her profound dismay as she listens to Jesus' reply to her request for help. Why does he mention time and occasion as an excuse for ignoring her problem? He's always been so helpful in the past. Why not now? But her persistence as she brushes aside the reply and puts out a challenge. Do as he tells you. Her faith is in the servants as well as in the master. This is the time for both faith and action. And sense her relief. As she, realize, as she sees the servants pouring the wine out of the massive water jars at the command of Jesus. Share her sense of satisfaction that she has been the means of this renewed celebration. Feel Mary's joy as she hears the guests express their amazement at how good that wine is. And share her joy as she sees people trusting her son as she has done. 
Her heart leaps for joy at this new birth of faith. The contrast with the old is striking. With joy, all hail a new richness in life. On the face of this, on the face of it, this story doesn't quite add up though. What wedding party would need 120 to 180 gallons of wine to quench a second thirst? But when you do some research, the clues the author gives reveal in dramatic fashion the transforming ways of the gospel. So consider carefully the first clue. On the third day, initially this phrase seems irrelevant. On the third day, from what starting point? Deeper thinking helps us understand on the third day is the clue to the resurrection and the transformation that it brought. This story reveals how the resurrected Christ has transformed the whole of life. Consider carefully the second clue. My hour has not yet come. The words might be better expressed in the form of a question. Is not this the turning point of time? The phrase is used in John's Gospel as a clue phrase about the occasions when Jesus is revealed as the source and the instigator of divine activity. The author says that if you have eyes to see, God's great power is at work in this action of Jesus. He gives the same clue about the actions of Christ on the cross. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Consider carefully this third clue. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification. This story is about the contrast between the way of salvation in the old religion and the way of salvation through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Ritual water becomes gospel wine. There is a new way to find forgiveness and new life. And it is Jesus who acts to bring about this transformation. Consider this fourth clue. You have kept the good wine until now. Despite God being active in the old wine of the people of Israel, God's full riches are now poured out in the superior wine of the death of Christ. Here we see echoes of the Eucharistic feast celebrated in the communities to which the gospel was addressed. They would understand the clues. With careful consideration, we can too. In the new wine of the Eucharist, Christ reveals his glory and we believe in him. Let's pray. God of wedding parties and new wine, of love and laughter, dancing and singing. We pause to pray for those among your world, worldwide family who today may be feeling left out in the cold. We ask that you bless the many people who must toil for such long hours that there is no time or energy to laugh or sing. Bless your children who feel so demeaned and exploited that they view even angels of mercy with suspicion and fear. Bless the many folk who are caught in vicious circles of evil and can see no way to escape. Bless those among your children whose every waking hour is spent in pain and whose sleep is at the best fitful. Bless those people who are drawn to Christ and new life, yet who fear the scorn of family, friends or workmates. Bless your children who once tasted the new wine of Christ, but have now slipped away into indifference or maybe despair. Bless those folk who with much trembling 
hand their lives over to you this day. May they find faith and courage for the days to come. Bless the people of your church, that abundant love may flow in our prayers, and our prayers flow into generous words and deeds. And in the moment of quiet, we lift to the Lord our own prayers of intercession. Long awaited Jesus, bring us rest for our weary hearts, bring us peace for our troubled minds, and bring us joy at seeing your face. We anticipate the great wedding feast, the celebration of your presence and our connection forever with you. In the name of Christ, who makes all things new, we pray. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Somebody's nicked my hand gel. having a dog keep coming in and out the door. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it right, is right to give thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross; we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension; we look for the coming of your kingdom; and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith! Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks, of praise and thanksgiving; and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We are here because Jesus has called us. Strangers and friends, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table where he meets us. And through him... We who are different are joined to each other. And so in this moment, we ask him to come. Come, Lord Jesus, and fill us with your love, peace, mercy and grace. Amen. Why did you know start running at the most holiest of moments? <laughs> Child of God, the body of Christ. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who gather, follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Stay safe, spread peace wherever you are, love and serve the Lord in any way you can. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Do stay safe, everyone. Take care. And as ever, if you want to be in touch, we'd love to hear from you. So just send us a message. <laughs>